Hi, everybody. Hello. How are you, Moskan? Good. How are you? Doing fine, thank you. Good. Is Asha with you today? Uh, he's coming now. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Very cool. On Monday, I was out of the town. I couldn't oh. make it. Okay. All right. No problem. So it's time to start. It's uh, 6.30 p.m. here in San Diego. And, uh, and I don't see our friends from the other side of the world. Uh, what happened to them? You know, <coughs> I, know, I know one of the families, uh, the Edwards family, um, they just started taking a vacation, family vacation today. So they will not be joining us on the live sessions. Uh, but they will be continuing uh, to work on their assignments and um, do their uh, and, and watch the recorded videos. Uh, let me just do this. All right. So I, uh, today's lesson is about responsibility and accountability, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, two of the very important uh, points of our borrowing system. That's why we have incorporated these two character traits because we, before we can borrow, we need to become responsible and accountable. Uh, but before we do that, let's just do a quick review of what we did. Uh, on Monday, uh, we basically talked about moderation, uh, creating a balance in our life, uh, how to uh, have a balance in our time, uh, in our uh, what we eat, uh, what we do, uh, and definitely what we do with our money. Because it's very easy to kind of lose sight of how we are allocating our resources, whether between money, time, uh, and so forth. So having uh, tables, charts, journals, whatever works for us, and our cell phone, that is a great way of taking charge of those. Um, so for our finances, uh, we definitely want to have a budget. And then more important than that is actually doing our income and expenses uh, on a monthly basis because budget is created once, uh, it's not that we need to create it and then forget about it, but we need to look at it on a regular basis to see what's happening with it. Uh, one topic that I forgot to um, kind of go over uh, as far as our um, moderation and responsibility and uh, budgets go, uh, we uh, looked at our balance sheet, our, inc our assets and liabilities. One thing we uh, forgot to talk about is the importance of having at least one individual in the family, if you are in a family situation, uh, not in a, uh, not in a, uh, if, you're, if you're a single individual, but if you are in a family situation, making sure that uh, there is someone who is particularly tech savvy and can work on uh, technical aspects of budgeting and tracking income and expenses. Often we have seen that, uh, in particularly in a uh, business or in a family situation, uh, people think that, or spouses think that the other side is taking care of finances and then it gets too late when they find out that, that no, it, they were not really in charge of it. Uh, the other thing that we forgot to talk about is approval limits. This is something that uh, it has worked really well uh, for our, our own family with our two boys who are 18 and 19. And even between my wife and I, um, is that um, it's a great idea to have approval limits, which means that certain, uh, up to certain points of expenses, uh, there should be more people involved. And it's really based on the family or the individual or the business itself. So if, for example, I feel like uh, I'm by myself and uh, I'm okay with spending money uh, left and right, so let's say anything that I want to purchase up to $200, I'm okay. I don't need to talk to someone about it. And this could be a small purchase or it could be a large purchase. Uh, then if I'm in a uh, family situation or a business uh, situation, maybe uh, up to a certain point, then after a certain point, we need to uh, discuss and have a consultation. Should we make this purchase? What are the alternatives? And so, forth. so for example, um, up to, let's say $5,000, uh, spouses or partners can uh, consult together and uh, come up. It's like, is this a good idea to make this purchase or not? Then for larger purchases, for example, when we're buying a house uh, or getting into investments, obviously we know some information, but then it's always wise to consult with other people, with professionals too. 
So let's say if you're uh, making any purchase over, let's say $10,000, if you're buying a car or something like that, it is a good idea um, to talk to someone else, consult and make sure that we are looking at different angles on the purchase that we are making. Uh, this works particularly really well uh, with youth. Um, so families that have youth, um, it's a good idea to start them small, uh, maybe once they start going out and uh, being with their friends and spending their own money, uh, parents can say, all right, up to, I don't know, whatever works, uh, $50 or $25, you're okay. Anything outside of that, you need to consult with us. Um, so that is a really helpful exercise, again, for individuals, for families, and even business partners, which is very helpful. Uh, so that's another thing that goes along with our uh, budgeting process uh, to make sure that nobody goes on their own and spend um, a lot of money. Uh, let's have this question on the, on the chat. Has anyone done this? Um, anybody uh, has created spending limit uh, for themselves, for their family, or for their business partners? If anybody has done that, um, what is your experience? Um, has it worked? Um, did it not work? Uh, and again, it's not about limiting the individuals, but it's forcing or encouraging the individuals, partners, or business partners to um, do uh, consult with each other and with more people than um, just one of them. All right, so uh, let's start with our responsibility lesson plan. And I did ask our um, staff to help me out here, if anybody wants to jump in. Um, so uh, responsibility, we all have um, chores, responsibilities as when you're a child, when you're older, um, responsibilities never end. Uh, well, there are times that we, are, we get to a point that cannot. We start in childhood when you're infant or toddlers. We don't have a lot of responsibility. Our parents don't expect much from us. Um, and then on the other side, when we get really old, and again, we cannot physically do things, or we're just too old, whether it's physical limitation, mental limitation, whatever that is, uh, people around us don't expect us to be that responsible. But for majority of our life, responsibility is something that is with us. Um, we start with simple things, uh, things going around the house, cleaning our room, washing dishes, taking the trash out, um, and then it becomes more and more complicated as uh, we grow older. We have to take on more responsibility. When we become youth, um, then uh, it is, uh, we start hanging out again with our friends outside of home, without parents. So we need to be more responsible, uh, particularly uh, during this time that uh, we really need to be careful of what's happening in there. So Deborah says, I know my husband who runs a lab has limits set for the students and post docs um, to, other, to order supplies and on their own. Uh, if it exceeds a certain amount, they have to consult the boss to ensure cost is appropriate and the supply is needed. Perfect. Um, it is a real uh, example of why these limits really help and they really work. Again, it's not about telling people you cannot do this, you cannot spend that money, but talking and consulting among different people. And often people may come up with a different idea. It's like, have you tried this? Have you looked at an alternative to what you're thinking about. Uh, let's see, so back onto our responsibility. Uh, let's have this question. Is there anyone who doesn't have any responsibility at all? They just don't do anything um, around the house or particularly around the house. This is one of my favorite times with students when I do ask the students and I love it when someone just does not have any chores or any responsibility. I try to look into their future uh, by uh, looking at like what happens to them if they don't have, if they have not learned how to wash dishes, how to clean their room, how to do laundry. Uh, a perfect example was a young girl. She was probably like 12 years old. Her name was Olivia. And um, she had no, they asked her, who does this? Who does that? Parents, grandparents, siblings. And then I asked, so who is going to be doing all this stuff for you? when you move out and go to university or eventually. And she said, my aunt and uncle would be paying for maids and butlers. And I asked, uh, have you asked your uh, 
uncle and aunt if they're willing to pay this or you think they will be paying? She says, no, I have not asked. Um, so her assignment was to talk to the uh, family and see if they're willing to pay for those. Uh, the next session, Olivia came back, head down, and I asked her, did you talk to your aunt and uncle? She said, yes. And I said, are they, pulling, are they willing to pay for your butler and maid? And she said, no. And my question was, uh, what are you going to do? She said, I was started washing dishes last night. So sometimes awakening is that simple, nothing more elaborate than that. It's very simple, but we definitely need to think about our responsibilities. So Nathan writes, I have a, a spending limit that is uh, discussed with my girlfriend. If anything uh, is $100, I ask her if I can get it, and she just calls me and says, I'm going to spend $100. And perfect. It's a perfect consultation between a couple or in the, in the business session. Um, so from our staff, anytime you like, I'd like to jump in and share something, uh, please um, definitely do so. Uh, all right. Uh, we also looked at... Um, knowing the different aspects of our responsibility. Um, so let's have this question in the chat. And the question is, if we are, um, let's say, renting an apartment, and then we are thinking of buying a house, because that was, I think, that's a goal that a lot of people have. Uh, move out of their apartment and then buy a house. Uh, what are the new uh, responsibilities that come along with buying a house? Because uh, often people think, well, it is, it's just simple. I buy a house, and then that's it. Um, so let's see if our friends that have a house or thinking of buying a house um, have that um, information in there. Uh, Barry, anything you'd like to add what we've done so far? Any example of breaking down a responsibility? No, are you talking about uh, activity two? Yes, activity two. Okay. What, what is one example that you normally do in class? Um, um, pet. A pet. So, uh, we always talk about, you know, when they want to have, or they're responsible for their pets, uh, what all is involved in being responsible for their pets. Okay. Um, so, what, so what are the things that we need to be responsible when we want a pet? Yeah. Well, and, and it also depends exactly what the responsibilities are, right? It could be that they um, are responsible for feeding, making sure their, uh, their dog or their cat has the food and the water, or maybe in the case of a dog, to walk it, you know, how frequently. Um, and um, um, I completely right. lost my train of thought. Uh, yeah. In terms of uh, also um, uh, cleaning up after one's pet be it a litter box or um, outside. Mm -hmm. um, cleaning, washing, feeding. Uh, yeah, those are, those are the great things because often our children want to take on a real responsibility of owning a pet, but then they don't necessarily recognize everything that goes along with it. Feeding, walking, playing uh, with, and these are mostly for uh, dogs. Cats are very much self-sufficient, uh, <laughs> but dogs, uh, let's just change this to a dog. Um, it does require a lot of, uh, even they need to be washed. Uh, yep, the bath. Yep, the bath. So uh, that is before, and, and through consultation, we also learn <clears throat> that uh, whenever we are taking on a real responsibility, that we know of the different elements that is happening in there, that, that's out there. Uh, so Mojgan to the question says, saving money, more money. Uh, that's one of the responsibilities, okay? So that's, that, that's very good. We definitely want to or like to uh, save more money. So saving uh, our money is definitely becoming responsible. All right. Uh, let's move on to, so these are the responsibilities that we have um, toward our, ourselves or maybe our family, people that we know, or maybe school where we attend. Uh, often uh, students have classroom assignments, um, duties um, that they do. But let's think about, um, if we should feel responsible um, for outside of these areas, um, our community, people around the world, uh, if we need to be thinking about them or not. Uh, so while you're thinking that question, uh, Nathan says, yes, I am renting a room, okay? Mortgage, homeowners, insurance, savings for damages, uh, property taxes. Um, okay, great. So yeah, when we go from a room to a house, 
it's a lot more responsibility that often people don't think about. Uh, maintenance, yes, maintenance is another thing um, that needs to be really thought about. When we live in an apartment, the landlord is usually responsible for all maintenance. Um, you just call the landlord and hopefully they show up early and take care of all the uh, problems. But then when we own a house, we definitely have to think about not only mo uh, monetary aspects of maintenance, but then who's going to do it? Are we doing it them ourselves? Are we having someone come in and do it? And, and, and so forth. All right. So the question that we are um, talking about right now is uh, our responsibility toward others. And Deborah says, um, yes. So uh, please put in some ideas in there. What are some of the ideas that you can think we should worry about uh, in our community, uh, in our country, and, and there's, I, which I think there is a lot um, these days, um, something that we can think about. Uh, as I was uh, reading some of the responses from uh, participants who did um, this assignment, um, I saw cleaning, um, cleaning our neighborhood. Um, so this was one of them. Let's see, clean community. So we know that there are a lot of communities that people are not paying attention to. Uh, they're just throwing their trash. Uh, in some places more, some places less, but it is a big issue in here. Uh, and uh, let's see, the other one that was very interesting from our friends in uh, India, uh, if you've ever been to India, you would know what this is. Noise pollution. Um, I, I lived in Pakistan for one year back in the 80s, so I definitely know what is noise pollution. Uh, people just love to use their horn in the car all the time, constantly. It is, I, I think, from what I remember, it's a, it's a cultural thing. Um, so those are the those are things. Let's say uh, recycling should be done more. Uh, keep clean our environment. So uh, Mojgan says recycling but maybe we can do something before we even get to recycling. Mm -hmm. um, and would also help us with trash because recycling, uh, it is a complicated process. Uh, it is, uh, doesn't always, not that it does not work, but most of the areas don't even have enough resources to recycle even close to like 50% of what can be or should be recycled. Um, so our idea, I mean, we've thought about is not recycling, uh, but refusing. Things that we can definitely live without. Um, and uh, so uh, using resources wisely, exactly. I think we have become a society that we just grab things as they're available without even thinking about it without even uh, having any thought as um, what is this, how is this affecting our environment? What's going on and, and how, what's, what's happening in there? Just because, for example, I think I shared this, just because when we go to a store and they offer a plastic bag at no charge, that doesn't necessarily mean that we should take that plastic bag. Uh, I know here in San Diego uh, for a while, um, they had banned, they stopped, uh, they, this allowed bringing your own uh, reusable bags into the supermarkets. Uh, but this week, I know that that has been eased up. So now again, we can bring our uh, reusable bags into the supermarkets. Uh, but still, there are a lot of people that just grab their things and put it in a plastic bag. And those plastic bags, they don't get, they cannot be recycled if they can, it's very difficult. Um, I know here in the US, our most of our recycles used to be taken to China. Um, however, that is not happening anymore. Uh, because China does not, uh, they don't have the capacity or they don't want to process our recycling. Um, the noisy neighbor's responsibility to keep out the suspicious people. All right. Um, so, um, yes, there's there's a lot that we can do. Um, uh, let's see, Nari, um, Jade, or anyone else, do you guys have some ideas about our responsibility toward others? You guys want to share something? Well, I can share one uh, which um, the student um, brought uh, up 
was, you know, in Southern California, uh, we've had serious drought problems um, in past seasons. And so they were very concerned about the fact that the janitor after lunch would, with a hose, um, hose down the uh, lunch area. And um, so their solution to that was to present to the, through their teacher, to the principal, that the uh, janitor, instead of using water, would use a broom and sweep up. And before that, that the students would be very diligent about putting their trash in the trash container. That, that's very good. Yes, exactly. There are so many alternatives. It could be a, a broom, even a blower, if, if students are not around. I mean, it does uh, uh, lift up dust, but that is something that can be done. Um, there's a lot of stuff. Yusuf, say, Yusuf says, throw away trash that you see so it won't end up in the in the ocean. That's that's a perfect example. I'm sure a lot of people have seen um, videos of what's happening where plastics are um, ending up. Uh, Mojgan says sharing toys, books, and clothing. There's so much you can do that will stop us from using particularly plastic. That's that that's a lot of things. Now some of the challenges are easy to tackle. They're easy to uh, get together and do, and some of them are uh, a little bit more difficult. Uh, I would think that noise pollution, it's a, uh, again, I hope I'm right, uh, it's a cultural thing um, that it will take some time for the culture to change so people are not honking their horns all the time constantly. Um, let's see, things that we do here that we can do a lot, um, we can definitely do a lot less of it um, beside plastic. Bottle waters, uh, that is something that has become a norm. People just see a bottle of water, grab it, and then they don't think about it. And often we see that uh, bottle waters are in the trash half full uh, because we don't think about how much it costs because bottle waters are fairly in it. They may look inexpensive, but actually if you do a comparison between a uh, water bottle and what comes up from the tap, in our home or in our work, uh, it's it's very much more uh, expensive. Uh, let's see. Deborah says, make sure children safe riding bike in streets and sidewalks. That's that's a perfect example. Again, looking at seeing, kind of think about these. Uh, Nathan says, someone that says at home to catch the people stealing Amazon packages, put out slow uh, down. All right, uh, perfect. Uh, these are uh, things that we can do. Uh, we have to think about. So if you remember, when we did our first uh, assignment, which was our spiritual and material goals. So let's go back to that. There was a question that says, what keeps you up at night? And uh, I know a lot of people have thought about, well, tomorrow's food, how we're going to uh, pay for rent, especially in these tough times. But really, our goal was for everyone to start thinking about beyond ourselves. So remember, based on the sacred writings that we read, uh, our livelihood, our life necessities are supposed to be provided by God, of course, given that we do walk his path, that we do follow what he has asked us in all these um, sacred writings. So uh, this would be an, another area when we don't have to think about our livelihood, then we can concentrate on education of others about keeping their community clean, keeping doing a lot of different stuff. Um, I know uh, this is not just in the US, but in many parts of the world, uh, the racial injustice that we are seeing, uh, that is something that can definitely uh, be thought about and people get together. If you're not worrying about food and water for next uh, for tomorrow, then we can talk about how do we eliminate some of these challenges within our community. I know, so Austin says, if you uh, throw away things, I believe it will still end up in the ocean. Yes, that is true. Um, they do definitely do that. Eliza says, neighbors keep me up. Uh, so we need to become respectful. If we have neighbors that are noisy, uh, maybe uh, before uh, calling the police, we can talk to our neighbors and uh, get together and, and make sure that we all respect each other. Uh, we all respect uh, where we live, how we look like, uh, what color skin we have, uh, what car we drive, uh, what bicycles our, uh, our children are riding. So we are not judging people based on anything, based on their material means, based on their 
uh, our physical body, appearance, how that is. So these conversations can definitely come out of getting together with neighbors. Um, Nathan says, I heard every time you throw away the plastic on the sofa can, uh, and the so uh, soda can, the sea life gets together and make a <laughs> volleyball net to play underwater volleyball. That's, <laughs> that, that's a great joke. And definitely there is net, uh, fishing nets are, um, fishing nets uh, that are broken and you see often uh, animals, uh, fish, turtles, um, they are stuck in, in a net. So there's a lot that we can think about. Uh, let's move on to continue uh, to our accountability, which is a follow-up to this. And there are videos. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone uh, got a chance to watch the videos, uh, but I'll, I'll put a post on the, uh, uh, in the group chat to make sure that we do watch the videos because these videos are great for enhancing, uh, empowering the topics that you're the responsibility topic and the uh, accountability topic. So uh, let me ask our staff, uh, let's see, Nari, uh, do you want to tell us uh, what is the difference between responsibility and accountability? I didn't mean to put you on the spot. <laughs> or anyone else? Irma or Judy? I, can, I think I should have done this assignment. I think responsibility is is one level of understanding what is in your purview of what you're supposed to do and accountability is more of an action to address what you're supposed to do okay all right very cool um so yeah i mean they're very much in line with each other but um, i always like to look at it as like accountability is the higher step like you said it's a it's the next level we take on responsibilities, we do them, but then sometimes other people have to watch over us. Uh, it's like, did you do it? Uh, especially when we're young. Uh, so uh, responsibility, there's a uh, post in there, responsibility is requiring to do something and accountability is being answerable to that, exactly. So when we, nobody uh, is supposed, to, when there's no need for anyone to supervise us, to watch us, make sure that we are doing our stuff, that is when we become accountable, we become routine. And I think we definitely see that in our children, even within the same household. Again, we have two boys, and uh, one of them was always responsible and accountable from the young age, but the younger one, it took a little while with homework, with uh, his money affairs, definitely, uh, definitely, with, definitely with his uh, money affairs, it took a while um, when we started giving him credit cards. Uh, we had to, uh, help him get into the habit of paying his credit card on every month and it took away it took about a year for him to develop that habit um, so that's why we've always also talked about that uh, getting finan uh, financial education finan becoming financially savvy is not just about doing this workshop for example it's developing these habits over time uh, so here we ask everyone to uh, think about what advancements uh, do we make in life uh, that would require um, borrowing something for it? Um, an example was starting a business uh, or expanding a business. Um, sometimes we need to borrow our money for it. And what is our collateral? When we start a business, usually since it does not exist, we often, when we go to a bank to borrow for a business, they would ask us to use the home that we live in. If we own a real piece of real estate, the bank would uh, require that to be uh, used as a collateral. And their compensation, not only they're expecting the money that they're lending us to come back, but they're also expecting us to pay them certain amounts of interest. Uh, so can somebody give me, uh, all right, let me see. Can somebody give us another example? of uh, something we would borrow that would help us make an advancement in, in life. How about a college degree? You uh, said Barry? Yes, Barry, what was that? College degree. College degree, okay. Uh, let's call it higher education, okay. And what would we borrow for our higher education? Money, money, books, expertise, 
You're really testing my That's good, Alex. skills. <laughs> okay, all right. So when we borrow money for higher education, what is the collateral? Uh, is there a collateral needed? Sure, I don't think there is. Well, te technically, Alex, the collateral on higher education is mm -hmm. your future earnings. So you're being, you're giving, you're getting that loan based on the idea that you'll be able to make more money in the future because of the, whether it's, um, you know, the degree or the cer certification or whatever it is you had to pay to get, um, to get that, that education. And then hopefully that's going to result in higher employment, higher uh, income. So that's kind of the collateral. Uh, I think no, you were. Yeah. I, I'm, 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 I think you were thinking of the return. That's more of a return. Yes. Remember, collateral is something that uh, the lender uh, wants <laughs> usually hold on to and wants to make sure if we don't pay the uh, loan back, they could mm -hmm. take that away from us. Uh, That's true. But but most of your college loans, they're uh, dependent on the fact that when you get done with college, you're going to make enough money to pay them back. That, that's that's true. So my thought process is uh, that actually for college loan, this is the this is this is the collateral. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Jay, I think it was Jay that says parents. Uh, it's because uh, here in the U.S., uh, student loans is the only one that you cannot get out of uh, until it stays with us until we die, and unfortunately many young ones because of the way uh, the collection is set up uh, it really drove them to uh, places that they should not have gone um, it's, it's really uh, very sad how our system at least is set up uh, the college the higher education is expensive and then uh, when college is done and the borrowers are supposed to be turning them back it has gotten to a point that life has become a the, the, the collateral in there um, all right uh, so let's go I actually created a sheet so we can look at some of the other items that we can borrow and find the sheet. Uh, there we go. All right. So borrowing, uh, a few of those we already have in there. And we, now we can look at more of uh, especially technical aspects of this borrowing. Thing. So higher education we talked about, we get a student loan. Does it produce income? Uh, we certainly hope so. Uh, I think the only ones that really takes a while to produce income is if you're becoming an archaeologist. You have to go uh, search for bones. Um, all right. Um, so Nathan says that my car, we'll talk about that. Uh, we talked about life. Uh, there is interest. When we borrow, uh, often, I mean, pretty much always, anytime we borrow money for something, uh, there is expectation that we will pay the whole thing back, what's borrowed, and then pay it back with interest. And interest, these are just uh, arbitrary numbers. These are uh, not, I did not do any kind of research. Um, uh, is that student loans here in the US, I think the interest rate runs between six to 8%. Uh, might be higher or lower. Um, so again, don't quote me on it, please. Uh, another one is if we are starting or expanding a business, uh, we want to uh, create a, a steady source of income for ourselves, for our family. So that's when either we start a business or um, we expand one. Uh, we would get a business loan. Uh, is it income producing? Yes, definitely. Uh, this is another, uh, one that uh, most likely they will ask if you don't, if this uh, business is not established, uh, the bank may ask for our personal home as a collateral because they do not know whether this business is going to be successful or not. They will look at our accountability factors, uh, which we will talk about on uh, Friday, to make sure that we are accountable, but then there is no guarantee that the business becomes successful. But regardless of that, they want to get their money back plus interest. Uh, those interest rates probably run between 4 to 8%. In there, you know, right? uh, when we are buying a house to live in, uh, that is our personal home. It's an investment. Uh, it is not only we get to put the money, uh, most of the money that we would pay for rent into our house, so we become owner of the house um, through getting a home loan or a mortgage, um, but also the uh, value of the house could easily go up if we buy in the right time. 
Same thing with the business and also the higher education. We didn't talk about the value. So those values could go up. Uh, does it produce income, personal home? Most often, no, unless if we can rent part of it. Um, so it's a yes and no um, kind of a response in here. The collateral is the building itself. Uh, at any point of time, if we cannot pay our uh, monthly rent, uh, banks usually allow us a few months to be late or to do something, but then eventually uh, they will kick us out from the house and they will own the house. Uh, it's not like they will only kick us out, but they will also own the building. They do not, they have no interest of keeping it, so they will sell it to someone else. Um, so for the mortgage that we are uh, collecting, uh, again, we need, you're paying interest. Uh, right now, uh, these are actual numbers. Uh, we are saying here in the US, we are saying home loans as low as 2.5, even lower, 2.2, uh, which I have never seen before. Uh, but because of everything that's happening, these are the rates. Uh, now, there's a lot go uh, into purchasing a house, preparing, being prepared for the house. If anyone uh, is thinking of purchasing a house, uh, we can definitely talk outside uh, if you need help. Um, you're not expert on that, but at least we can um, show you. We have worksheets about um, how the loans work, how the fees work, how everything. We, we cannot, again, uh, make any recommendation whether you should buy a house now or not. That's totally up to the individual or the family. But at least we can help with the terminology and how things work and how to prepare uh, for purchase, making such a large purchase. Uh, the other type of uh, loan that we might be getting, similar to the previous one, is when we are thinking of getting a real estate investment, uh, purchasing a uh, something that produces income. Uh, it could be a single family home, it could be a condo, it could be a multi-unit, uh, anything above two, three. Um, so there are all different options in there. Uh, it definitely produces uh, income. It also goes up in value, we hope so. Um, and then the, again, the building itself becomes collateral and the lender is going to request interest from us um, for about uh, the same, uh, roughly about the same percentage of uh, interest in there. Now we're getting to uh, the two that uh, some people think that yes, they are uh, good loans uh, or may not, or we cannot live without. Uh, so these are for our emergencies. Uh, emergency, often we might uh, borrow from our credit card. Uh, usually it does not produce any kind of income. There's definitely interest to be paid um, if we are not paying back uh, on time. And then we'll talk more about credit cards on Friday. And credit cards usually have one of the highest, uh, not the highest, but the highest really high interest rate, uh, 15 to 25%. Uh, so we really have to be uh, careful uh, what we use our credit cards for. Uh, convenience. Uh, often, uh, if we don't have uh, other, uh, I mean, in, in the past, it used to be that we would pay here in the U.S., we would pay with a check or cash. Um, and then credit card was an alternative and convenient way of doing that, but then we would forget how much we have uh, spent on our credit card. Uh, and again, this um, high interest rates in here. Uh, anyone can think of other types of borrowing, one I forgot to put in here, uh, but anyone can think of other from our staff or from uh, the audience. Is there another type of uh, borrowing that's actually very expensive? Uh, Right. I'm put that in here. Uh, predatory lending, I don't know, I probably this is available in other countries. Uh, predatory lending uh, is, or payday loans, as they're known in here. Ah, that's good. Uh, payday loans are uh, small shops, uh, or sometimes they could be part of a bigger organization, uh, where, um, uh, where uh, the payday loan will collect your check or uh, get your uh, check that you will be getting, the money that you will be getting from your employer. Let's say you're expecting to receive $500 from your employer uh, in two weeks, but you really need the money now. 
for whatever reason, uh, you can go to the, such a place. Uh, they will give you partial part of that uh, $500, and then they will, in turn, they will collect the payments that you would normally get from your employer. Um, this is one that is extremely uh, expensive. Uh, I think in California, I saw the rate being at 400%. Uh, 400, 450%. Uh, that is something that, and, and uh, it's, it's really uh, not the best way or even the way that should be uh, used. Uh, but a lot of people, unfortunately, use these types of lending from what I can see and our, uh, our staff, since uh, I think all of us are familiar with this type of lending, is that because people don't don't have a plan, or they have also lost, uh, for whatever reason, uh, they have lost their trust in a financial institution, in a bank, or in a credit union. In there, I've seen several people uh, where I asked them why they not have a bank account, and their response was that uh, banks steal our money. Uh, banks and financial institutions, at least here in uh, U.S., they don't uh, take out, uh, they don't steal our money but there are guidelines that we need to follow. Um, for example, uh, when we have a savings account in a bank, there's usually a minimum amount required, especially once we turn 24 after uh, school is done. Usually for children, there's very minimum, uh, uh, minimal amount that's required to be in there, maybe like $25 or so uh, every month. But then for adults, it's usually about 300 We have to keep $300 into our savings account. Otherwise, the banks, that is part of their agreement. They, we agreed with them that if we keep less than uh, $300 in the savings account, they can charge us. They can take anywhere between 5 to $15, $20 every month from the bank. So we can see that if we don't look at our bank account, don't have enough money in there, uh, it would be depleted in over a period of time. So we cannot blame the financial institutions but it's the blame is on us because we did not pay attention to the paper that was provided to us when we opened the account. Uh, so personal loans, yes, there are definitely personal loans uh, that we can get from our friends and family in there. Uh, but overall, we have to, I mean, uh, borrowing is something that especially in our, here in our society in the US is very uh, normal. But we need to be responsible borrowers. We need to be accountable borrowers. Uh, while there are times that we are enticed to borrow something, uh, it's ultimately, it's our decision. Um, so we really have to be careful about it. Um, anything uh, from our staff, anything about uh, borrowing, uh, particularly here in the US? We do have, I think, a few families from the US. Yep. Anything that you have seen uh, uh, from people that over borrow, what happens to people that over borrow beyond their means, beyond what they can? Well, it's a financial it's a setback for sure. I mean, they can have their car repossessed, whatever the thing they borrowed for, or uh, you know, their house. Um, they can lose their home. So there's. There's dire, uh, dire circumstances. No, dire consequences. Consequences. Thank you. <laughs> yes. So it it uh, points to how important it is to plan and to be responsible and accountable for your finances. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, Emma, did you have something to add in there? Yeah. Um, over borrowing produces a lot of stress. It's very stressful to, you know, I have a close family member that had to go to one of those credit, credit uh, companies that fix your credit or help you, you know, um, reorganize your debts. Okay. And it's really painful. It's painful and it's stressful and it's frightening to be in that position. So I, I learned by watching, I learned firsthand. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so since we have two, uh, we have friends from uh, uh, 
Philippines and also from India and uh, uh, from Nigeria. Uh, what are, are what are some of the issues that you have seen uh, in your area um, with people over borrowing? If you can put it in the chat, uh, where do you see people over borrowing? I know last series that we did with our friends in Ghana, um, they when we when we were organizing the group together. Uh, they would, uh, one of the major issues they, they felt is that people are always uh, trying to uh, show, pretend who, who they are not. Uh, and this was something that we talked about being honest and truthful. Uh, uh, Emmanuel said that uh, people in Ghana, uh, every time they are going to a gathering, being a family gathering, a wedding, uh, every week when they go to uh, houses of worship, uh, they love to buy a new dress or a new suit or something like that. And that is pushing them beyond their means. Um, so it is really uh, important to kind of understand that we don't live our lives for other people. Uh, now, that doesn't mean that we are not dressed nicely or we are not really caring about others. We want to do that. But particularly showing off with things that we don't have on borrowed money. Um, this I have heard from many people um, that are in the banking services that do know people's what people have and what they don't have. And often they say, oh, everything that you see in this neighborhood uh, is on borrowed money. Uh, so Deborah says uh, they get a bad credit rating and can have trouble borrowing until they build back their credit rating again. Perfect. That's something that we'll uh, discuss uh, on Friday. We're going to go very detailed into credit um, here in the U.S. Uh, Jennifer from Philippines says, most people here uh, borrow from small uh, lending institutions with almost 40% interest rate. Just to use the money for something uh, mm -hmm. so yeah. trivial and not for emergency or life and death situation. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, no income. Nathan says that no income is being circulating through the economy. That's true. We are in a special uh, situation right now that uh, just as we think economy is kind of coming back together, uh, things go backward. Uh, for those that are outside of San Diego and you don't know, California just decided to close all the restaurants inside dining in the restaurants, movie theaters if they were trying to open up, uh, hair salons that had opened up, now they are shut down again. So people are left um, with no income or very little income. Uh, so these are the situations that we really need to prepare ourselves for. I, and again, one of the best ways to really be on top of our finances is to know what's happening with our monthly or annual uh, income and expenses, what we have and what we don't have. So I know we've talked about the budgeting and so forth. Uh, there is a reason we're overstressing that uh, element of finances. It's because it's really important, uh, extremely important to know what we have how much you're spending, how much is coming in, and to be able to adjust accordingly um, and not be taken under. So in, in good times when we have lots of income, if we are having some luxuries or if you're eating out a lot, you're going to Starbucks a lot, uh, then those are things that we can definitely start cutting from the beginning when uh, something like the pandemic happens that we lose our income. Uh, all right. Let's see. Uh, so what else we got in here? All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, the credit. I think this is a good segue to our discussion um, on Friday. So Friday we will be getting into, we will uh, go into heavily uh, how uh, financial institutions look at our uh, financial credibility and accountability and responsibility. Again, when we go to a financial institution, and we want to borrow money for any of the items that we wrote in here, they want to make sure that we are responsible, accountable, and punctual um, to return what they are giving us. Uh, and that is, uh, there are ways that they can look at that. Uh, in a lot of countries, I know US, Canada, and uh, at least UK, when we were doing this workshop, um, they use certain credit agencies, which we'll talk on, on Monday. I believe I did ask someone in India, uh, what is the credit system there? Uh, and I read up on it. Uh, it seems like there's a lot of credit agencies in, in India. 
so uh, if you have not uh, looked at those agencies, if you are not familiar, uh, please do that. I have not looked at Philippines to see what type of credit agencies, if they do for credit cards. I know credit cards are used there because I was there a few years ago. Uh, I believe in Nigeria, credit cards are not a uh, necessarily a big issue, uh, but probably borrowing is. So there has to be a system when we want to borrow for any of the items that we listed in here. Uh, lenders can look at our uh, accountability and responsibility. Uh, here in the US, our uh, uh, credit system uh, can build actually from birth. Uh, so uh, our children, as soon as they're born and have a social security number, they can have a credit uh, score. That might be news to a lot of people, uh, but it is absolutely true. Uh, it cannot be checked, but they could have uh, credit from the time they're born. And we'll get into it on Friday. I want to make sure you come through uh, the session on Friday. Uh, but officially, uh, our young ones here in the US, they can start to look at the credit from the age of 18. So when people turn 18, they can look at their credit on their own. They are considered as uh, not a minor anymore. Um, so that, that can be um, definitely done. And parents can actually help their children build credit from very young age, uh, literally, uh, the credit score. Um, so one assignment um, for uh, Friday uh, for our friends here in the U.S., if you have not, so let's ask this question. Let's, can, can we have any questions today's lesson? The question is from our adults here in the U.S. Uh, do you know what is in your credit report or credit scores? Have you looked at your credit report or credit scores at all? Uh, if not, uh, Friday's assignment is going to be um, to do that. Because everyone can do it and there is no cost to it. Uh, anyone over the age of 18 here in the U.S. can look at the credit uh, co uh, credit score and credit report at no cost. All right, so Nathan says yes, he knows that, that's great. Uh, one of the uh, items that uh, I usually like to recommend for people who are thinking of getting married um, is to look at each other's credit score and credit report. Um, because as we talked about uh, last time, uh, when we get married, it's not just the physical union of the two people, it's the financial union, it's the spiritual union. Um, so we need to try to understand as much as we can. Um, not that that should be a, a reason to break our engagement or something, but it's becoming aware of what our backgrounds are. I think we spent a lot of times uh, when, when couples want to get married, uh, they do spend a lot of time to get to know each other, uh, but finances is something that is almost forbidden. Uh, they don't talk about, um, and it should be talked about uh, and learned uh, and, and kind of look at it. Uh, so anytime I see friends who want to get married, it's like, do you know your, each other's credit score or credit report? Uh, just, just to see what they're coming up against, all right? So Cheryl says, uh, yes, you know, so uh, credit uh, score, Morgan says, that's great. Uh, but this is something that uh, is not taught uh, to especially our young ones uh, here in the U.S. Everyone thinks that when our kids uh, grow to be old enough to have a credit card, they can just go uh, the financial institutions, most likely give them credit cards. Uh, but hardly anybody educates our young ones on how to use particularly credit cards because they're easy to use, but then they could be very uh, dangerous if you don't understand how to use them. Uh, a lot of uh, young ones, they would think of credit cards as a source of money and as an emergency. I think we use an example, uh, having a college party and uh, being short on pizza. And somebody says, oh, I'll just use my credit card. I'll buy everyone pizza. Oh, who's going to pay for it? They're not thinking about that. Um, so those are the things that we have to uh, think about. Uh, let's see. I I think that's all the um, assignments um, that, that we have um, for, for Friday. Uh, uh, Jay just put the question in here. If there are any other questions, we have still have a few minutes before we wrap up. 
any question from anyone from uh, for everything that we have covered so far um, to here, uh, what we're going to do on uh, Friday, uh, any comments or anything from our staff uh, about today's lesson that I missed? No. All right, Nathan is Nathan is willing to buy donuts for everyone. So, <laughs> gonna pay by cash. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, so, Deborah, homework? Uh, no, I because uh, if if you already know your uh, if you already know your uh, credit score and credit report, no, I know you have uh, many children uh, that uh, you can work with them. I don't know if your children know have logged into. Uh, look at the credit score and credit report. It can be done on Credit Karma uh, here in the U.S. Uh, and uh, let's see, a lot of uh, a lot of banks also offer these days free credit score on, on when you log into your account. Uh, and, and also, uh, I know for today um, there was some assignment uh, that I, I didn't see a lot of people completing for responsibility and for accountability. If you did not get a chance to do those. Uh, particularly what we can do, how we can help our community. Uh, please definitely do so. Our responsibility and accountability toward the community. What services? Uh, Alan? Yes. This is also a good opportunity for the families that are um, participating to take a little bit of time with the whole family and talk about household responsibilities, chores, and how to hold each other accountable for each of our responsibilities. Yep. Okay. Yes, that definitely. I, I know, uh, at least in our household, uh, our boys are, uh, they're fairly responsible, but um, I think they're too occupied with social media that often they even see the um, trash uh, can inside the kitchen and they pass by it, it is full. They pass by it several times and they just ignore it or they don't see it. Um, so yes, definitely I think um, uh, it would be uh, helpful to talk about. I think more and more our youth are becoming, uh, even adults, I mean, let's not just talk about youth. I think we are just being drowned um, into social media that we are not paying attention to what's happening around us, whether it's our responsibility inside the house and also outside the house. Yes. Um, so it's definitely, uh, it, we, need, we need a lot of work in, in that area uh, too. And hoping that we will raise generations that are paying attention. They're not ignorant of what's happening in their surroundings. That's really what is important to make sure that we pay attention to our surroundings by thinking about, again, what we are using and what we are throwing away. Do we really have to use that stuff? Do we have to throw it into um, trash? We will talk next week more about composting, recycling, and refusing. So becoming aware of all of these um, would be um, very helpful. Uh, Mojgan has a question about how to build Asha's credit score. We'll talk about that on Friday. So you get a login if I come back on Friday and we'll talk about that. All right, if there's no other questions or no other comments, uh, we can end today's session. Uh, thank you so much uh, for everyone coming, again, from all across the world, uh, keeping us company here. There's still a lot to be learned and, and work together, and we look forward to having you on Friday. Good night. Good night.